morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you're listening in the world to this podcast today. My name's Paul Webb. I am the founder of B2B Energy, and you are listening to Energy Speaks Back. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. And have I got an exciting conversation for you tonight? So um, I'm going to—I've caught up today with one of my close friends. I can call him my close friend because we've been talking a lot on Zoom and and we see each other every day on LinkedIn. And my close friend is from Kenya, uh, western part of Kenya. He's going to tell us more about the exciting part of Kenya he comes from. And his name is Festus. So Festus, how are you? Great to see you. Ah, uh, great to see you, Paul. You know, it's always a, a pleasure engaging and talking with you. And, you know, I'm really disappointed that this isn't a video for the audience because you're glowing today. Come on. Why are you, why are you glowing today, Festus? What's that all about? <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, Paul, I always am one individual that uh, loves what he does. You know, I, I like what I do. I I like what I study. I, I live life and... Uh, you know, I thank God about that. Do you know, we've had quite a few calls, Festus, and I think I've called you in the morning, I've called you in the afternoon. You always look bright and you're always ready for the day. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the spirit, you know. We have to live positively, even despite the situation that we, we are living in in this time, when everything, all the news that are popping up are all negative. But, uh, you know, we have to draw strength from within us and say, I am happy, I must be happy. I must go to the world and show the world that despite all these things, I am strong and I'm better every day. So uh, for me, I live one day at a time and that's how I, I take life. Brilliant, that's excellent Festus. And I, I feel that every time I speak to you. So Festus, look, for everybody, tell us what you, tell us about you and what you know your background and, and what you're doing in, in Kenya. Yeah, so my full names are Festus Kiplagat. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm based in the western part of Kenya. It's just as Paul you've said, in a, 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 a tiny little city called Eldoret. Uh, uh, Eldoret is known as the city of champions uh, in terms of uh, athletics. This is where all the athletes, the elite athletes that you see uh, winning cross-country races, you know, steeplechase and dominating the track events. Uh, and are, are, you a run, are you a runner, Festus? I, I used to run short races while I, when I was young and, you know, <laughs> so it's part of me. I come from that com same community that run, you know. Keep like right. that is, that's the, the, the clan, the tribe that has produced uh, you know, very strong and uh, very good quality runners of all time. Brilliant. Yeah, so so this is uh, my home. Um, and uh, um, my journey, you know, Paul, uh, in, uh, in uh, my journey in forestry, agroforestry began when I was a tiny little kid. I was born in the rural part of Kenya, you know, uh, where we were we were living adjacent to a, a woodland forest, and uh, I am a last born of uh, a family of nine. Uh, you know, so as so it's common practice. You know, uh, for in, in the villages there, where the young boys take care of either the the family herd, either the the cows or the the sheep or the goats, for that matter. So for me, I I used to like taking care of the sheep. So I would drive the sheep into the forest and there were no gadgets like uh, this time, you know, there, there were no telephones, you know, there were no transistor radios that could keep you busy. So it could get into the forest and whistle, you know, we could, we had our own traditional strategies of connecting. So we could whistle and, you know, connect, connect my peers. And that is where now we could enjoy seeing the butterflies, chasing after butterflies. Wow. Was it enjoying wild fruits? We could not even go back home uh, for lunch because uh, we had enough. You know, there were a lot of diverse uh, fruits, even 
there were some uh, some uh, some some uh, tu- tubers, some kind of potato wild potatoes that we could get in the forest, and there were a lot of things we could enjoy. So we, we were always full, and um, I was a, a champion swimmer, you know, among as my peers that time in the rivers. You know, we could swim in the rivers where we could encounter snakes. So, uh, lucky enough, there were no crocodiles in the rivers. <laughs> We connected so much, so with nature, you know, uh, because I could. Uh, we had the um, the indigenous knowledge because we knew the, uh, the 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 local names of of the trees. Sometimes we could feel sick, you know. You have fever. You are you're not you feeling like uh, as a little tiny kid, you know. You, there was a way you could feel. You're not you're unwell. We knew the specific plants, you know, the trees that we could. Uh, either chew the, chew the leaves, chew the bark or the roots. I know you could get well. Wow. You know, I, I was lucky one at uh, that time that, you know, I, I was, I want to say, I want to, uh, I, I believe that uh, out of the kind of the environment that we, we were raised in, we, it kind of built our immune system because we, we could not easily uh, get sick. And my mom was a, a, a village herbalist. She's now, she's now, she's now grow, aging, aging gracefully. Uh, she could take me to the forest to assist her, you know, get some roots, you know, some herbs for other uh, people who could visit her, you know, to treat some ailments. So I had that knowledge. I still do. When I get to the village, I get to the forest, the same forest, still well, but not intact as it is, and chew some. Mm-hmm. You know, chew some, uh, <laughs> some hugs. So, that, so that's your secret, Festus. Yeah, that's, that's my secret. secret. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you I get find all your minerals. And, you're getting all your minerals and vitamins from the forest. Absolutely, uh, Paul. And um, to cut the story short, you know, I, I would want to mention that uh, my mom used to boil concussion hubs, you know, and we were, we were, it was, compulsory that time to take at least half a glass of the concoction. And uh, we, I, I, I want to believe that, that that kind of concoction kept us strong and healthy. And really? We could, we could seldom get sick, you know. And, and I remember... Estes, did it taste nice or did it, was it not very nice? It was not very nice, but, you know, my <laughs> mom could, my mom could hold, a, a, you know, a, a Again, you know, yeah, yeah. and force you to take it. You know, it was a must. You must take it. You must take it. it didn't matter how bad it tasted. It doesn't matter, you know. You well, and I still do take until this time. You know, it affected. You know, it yeah, influenced yeah. me, and uh, it is a it, it is a good um, it is a good uh, it's it is I can say a traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge, Paul is amazing. You know. Yeah. We. It is, I think we, for, we forgot when, you know, our education system did not anchor on uh, building um, traditional knowledge and advancing the, the, good, the good course from the traditional knowledge. Upon. And do you encourage your children now to take this medicine? Sure, yeah. In fact, in my compound here, I have, uh, I planted a few, I've planted medicinal, medicinal plants. Yeah, my, yeah. In, uh, on my you know backyard here, and uh, sometimes I take my little ones and you know get some some bark out of it and encourage them to chew as I chew, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I believe it is making them like me as well. Brilliant. Well, when I come to Kenya, obviously we've we've arranged that one day we we'll meet each other. You must ensure that I participate in this medicine to see what it actually does and to taste it. Sure, sure, Paul. Uh, I won't hesitate to, you know, to have your, to, to, you know, to make, to ensure that you have a feel of the things that I enjoy. Excellent. And I know um, we, we let everyone know that you've, you've actually got a plant with my name or a tree with my name on, which um, you gifted me many months ago to sort of say that, you know, to welcome our friendship, which is amazing for, to have, I've got this tree in, Kenya growing up and I've got to go there now to go and see it growing. It's important (laughs) to me in my life. (laughs) 
So, first, yeah. tell me about your organisation and what, you, what your goals are over there, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, Paul, uh, very quickly before I mention that, you know, out of uh, that interaction with nature when I was young, when I grew up, I began seeking for opportunities to study nature. Right. And that is where my journey, my journey in forestry. In my, after high school, I when I transitioned from high school, got into college, I began building my career around nature. And that is why I did forestry in my undergraduate. And then, um, uh, then I got into, into the opportunity to work for government. And then I began, I continued to build my career. Uh, I did a master's in uh, agroforestry just to get a blend of, uh, um, you know, forestry is so biased to, towards, uh, you know, plants and management of trees and the environment. So I wanted to bring, you know, the issues of livelihood and that interaction with the, the human uh, uh, component. So that's why I did uh, agroforestry. Uh, so, um, you know, I've been engaged in uh, several organizations working uh, in several projects that build climate resilience uh, for communities. Uh, so my experience is vast, working even into um, the across the border, working into Uganda. I've been involved in some resilience projects um, in Uganda. You know, Uganda had issues, a uh, lot of conflicts there. So I was called upon in one of the projects to uh, set up a livelihood and resilience projects as an intervention after the post, you know, you know, as a post conflict intervention to bring uh, integration and cohesion for communities. So uh, that is um, my experience. And then uh, in my heart, I've been having the dream to uh, rally all the knowledge, the, under, the, 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 the experience that I've had to focus on building my own vision. And that is where, uh, that is how um, I founded Green Planet Initiative 2050. Uh, 2050, uh, GPI 2050, Paul, is um, founded on four pillars, right. you know? So four pillars of uh, number one, regenerative agroforestry. Those uh, initiatives, those techniques, those models that I've seen working for communities. So I'm focusing GPI 2050 to support uh, smallholder farmers and pastoralists, you know? Um, th those th they have been marginalized in a way. A lot of focus has been in, uh, you know, conservancies and large scale farmers. But those communities were, you know, were in within the high altitude areas where it's more productive. But my uh, focusing my my my, um, my 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 components, you know, the components that I'm promoting, I'm focusing towards smallholder farmers and fragile contexts, you know, where we have pastoralists, you know. So that is my focus. Yeah. And what are your goals to bring to the to this planet? What's, what's your trying to where where do you where do you want to take this? Yes. So my my big ambition is to transform landscapes. You know, I want to transform forest. You know, landscapes, and bring about uh, restoration of the environment. There's been a lot. Of, there's a lot of degradation. Contribute towards. Uh, SDG number 13, climate action, using practical approaches that are working um, for communities and leveraging uh, Paul on indigenous knowledge that I had. You know, we, it was not, I, I still farm until today, you know, even in my backyard, I, I, I have a small uh, unit where I do farming. Yeah, yeah. So we, we want to bring that knowledge, leverage on it, support communities to, um, to find uh, to improve their livelihoods, to find, uh, you know, food security, support children, you know, children are the most affected uh, by climate change, you know, climate change is impacting more on children uh, than adults. So I'm creating movements at the grassroots from farmer to farmer, you know, spread, that is spreading from farmer to farmer, village to village, community to community region to region. And my big ambition is to mobilize eco-regions, connect eco-regions, farmers having, um, you know, supporting value chains for, uh, that build uh, sustainability. 
that, so that's my broad uh, pers- uh, perspective and vision, uh, Paul. Is it, for me, is, is it about planting trees and growing this forest? Or is there other aspects that come into it, like water, sustainability? Do, do you, are you introducing or are you linking all those areas together as well? Yes, because we are working in partnership also with government. So we integrating the all the um, all the, the the components together. You know, all the the um, interdependent. You know, there's a lot of interdependence when it comes to nature and environment. So we have water. You know, we have agriculture. We have um, um, you know we have we have livestock components. You know, bringing together all those components working together with other players in the environment uh, 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 in the environment sector you know so connecting the sectors together but most importantly uh, where I'm anchoring my efforts around is um, supporting communities to regenerate their landscapes without necessarily uh, planting trees I'll tell you what uh, Paul there is what we call underground forest. When the trees, the vegetation has been removed, there is the potential for nature to, to sprout back, to re-engineer, to rejuvenate itself. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. communities have knowledge on that. So encouraging, because some of the uh, um, farmers, they don't have, you know, they, they just, you know, they, 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 they just, you know, beginning life, you know, they are struggling with life. So you can't tell them to plant trees. They, they have land. So we encourage them to restore, you know, to regenerate their, their farms. Yeah. So they set apart a portion of their farms and then allow regeneration. All the, you know, grass, beginning from undergrowths, you know, grasses come up, uh, sapling uh, plants come up and they yeah. manage yeah. based on the objective. So that is the starting point. You may call it tree growing because that is like nurturing what is already there. Yeah, I've seen that. Actually. I've seen it recently. Sorry, Sorry, Festus. I've seen it recently in um, so on um, David Attenborough's film. He walks around this village first of all, and that's the village that was adjacent to Chernobyl, where it got wiped out. And it was a city with loads of buildings and houses, and now all trees are growing through these houses, where they've regenerated themselves. And that's what he's talking about: regeneration. Yes. Uh, regeneration, there is power in regeneration. There is what we call underground forest, quote unquote. There is seed in the ground. Yeah, yeah. And there is a potential in stems and roots to regenerate faster than even tree planting because the regenerating uh, trees are more adaptive, they are native, and they, 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 you know, they have more uh, vigor in terms of growth. Yeah. It's brought back. So all that farmers do is to manage uh, regeneration. Uh, but, uh, you know, where there is totally no regeneration, or where there is a lot of degradation, we encourage communities to do enrichment planting. So they reintroduce, they reintroduce uh, uh, high value trees like fruits, you know, yeah. promoters of fruit trees so that they get food fodder and and, and, and pasture for for the community. So they, they you know, so so linking, leveraging on nature, and also adding value to nature to support yeah. the climate yeah. solutions. So, Festus, how do um, how do you uh, monitor this? How do you know whether you're making a difference with with what you're doing here? Is there some form of measurement that you've applied to this? Yes, Paul. We we have a mechanism, you know, we're leveraging also on technology. Uh, we have uh, these apps, you know, there, there are some downloadable apps that we use for, normally use for, for surveys. So we use the open data uh, kit, ODK tool. What we did, you get the app, and then we, we generated some tools, like uh, if I want to do monitoring, number of trees planted, right. when, was, when was the trees planted? which species were planted, who planted them, uh, how long has, you know, how long will it take like to gain some uh, uh, very good uh, height, you know, that kind of thing. So we 
have those tools, monitoring tools uploaded in the phones so that when we visit the field, you interact with the farmer using that tool. Right. You can do that <laughs> offline. And then when you get uh, online, you know, you upload that we have a, a server that keeps our data. So, right. so over time, and we also take uh, GPS coordinates of uh, the localities. On. And and are you getting satellite views of what's going on from satellite? Yes, we are working into that now. We we are beginning to build, uh, um, you know, like if it is we 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 go by acreage. Yeah, yeah. So we begin to build that because we started back in 2015, and we want to build like uh, the satellite imagery or to show the impact of our intervention. Fantastic. And Festus, how long, so when did you start day one from this sort of project and, and you know, how far do you think you've achieved? Well, where have you got, you know, how much of a journey have you got to go now? <laughs> well, I, I began, I am a tree grower. You'll see on my profile that I, yeah, am, yeah, a tree, yeah. I am a tree grower. And uh, that's why the, the immediate thing when we connected, you know, I thought of planting a tree for this friend of mine as a show yeah. of love and because in Kenya when we have uh, ceremonies, events and uh, either national or whatever event, uh, we normally, uh, whoever graces the event plants a tree and you know you don't plant a small tree, you plant a dignitary plants, a, a, you know, a, a well-grown yeah, tree. Yeah. Yeah. So when I yeah. saw you and then you're a, fr a friend of mine, I took you as a, a dignitary. So I I, I chose one of my overgrown plants that I, I keep I keep in my compound and I've planted for you and it is growing. Maybe for the listeners, I planted Prunus Africana. It right. is a, it's a, it's a, it's a native variety in Kenya and it has, um, it has uh, medicinal, medic, medicinal qualities. Uh, people used to treat prostate cancer. Wow. Uh, yes, you, you, you crush the, the roots and that, the, that powder is, is used to, you create a concoction out of it and uh, you know, it, it's used to treat prostate cancer, especially for the elderly. So it is a, it is a well-respected uh, species, Paul. So it's a show of love. Thank you. I feel very honored that you've done that. It's, it, it's touched me for that. And by returning, you know, for the, you know, I wish this was video because I've got a, a plant because I, I love growing money plants, which is a, a jade. Um, and I grow these on my windowsill, many, many plants. And I, I've got one of these. So when I come, I'll bring that with me. Um, ah, if, I can get through, if I can get through customs or whatever, I don't know what the, the legal side of that is. But if I can get that to you, I will, will bring that to you when I come. So I'll, this is the, I'll, I really I'll appreciate it. I really appreciate your time with on different time zones. Um, so, Professor, just to leave, is there anything that you could leave our audience today with something special from you? Yeah, I would uh, ask the audience. We have uh, a crisis, and this crisis, however much it's been defined, we have a crisis. We many people call climate crisis. We, many other people called biodiversity loss and all these things. We have a climate change problem. And uh, a lot of our problems today um, are generated uh, because we have destroyed nature. Um, our, no, our very own Professor Wangari Matai, uh, the Nobel laureate, laureate, once said, if we destroy nature, nature will respond and destroy us mercilessly. And I want to believe that that is what is happening now. Yeah. It, is my, it is my appeal to all the listeners, uh, Paul, that we need to take individual action and implement approaches that are geared towards conserving nature. Right from your doorstep, take action. And uh, also asking, we ask uh, the business community, you know, Paul, the people, the corporate has the strength now. We want to ask the co we want to call upon the corporate uh, world, you know, the business community, to set apart, you know, to 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 have 
an objective of supporting nature. So that when we build, so we build a global movement from individual to corporates to governments. When we take responsibility, we can have a, a planet back. It will take some time. We need patience. It, is, it will never take a quick fix. I mean, we've lost the Amazon, which is dubbed as the, the, the lungs of, of the world. We've lost the mangroves. The mangroves are the, the, the you know, like the gem that absorbs a lot of carbon. Yeah. We've lost yeah. the platoons in the oceans. So we need to mobilize ourselves, be, beginning from me and you, Paul, individuals, corporates, governments, have a movement on a global scale and also rally behind uh, those who are at the grassroots moving like myself, rally behind them, support them to deliver the action that the planet deserves. Paul. Festus, that was amazing. You one, you're one amazing person. I totally respect what you've just said and what you're doing. Um, you know, I follow you on LinkedIn. I think everyone should be following you um, and yes. following that movement. Amazing yes, and, story. And, and I do use LinkedIn to build my network and also inform. <laughs> I need to educate the people out there, you know. Yes, you do. And you're doing an amazing job. So, Festus, I'd like to thank say you. thank you very much for coming today. It has been a real pleasure. It's lovely seeing you. You know, you, you make you make me have a goosebumps every time I talk to you with, with your passion. It's unbelievable. So, Festus, be safe and be well with all your family. And I'm sure we will keep in contact. Thank you so much, Paul, and thanks for having me. No, thank you. Take care, yeah? Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining me today on this podcast. And thank you for my special guest. Please go and check out our website on www.b2benergy.co.uk where you can see many more insights to how you can manage that third largest expense. Thank you. That just leaves me for one more thing to say. Be safe.